Hello there guys, welcome to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In this one we're going to be taking a look at splines. Now this is something that confused me for the longest time and I found that once I cracked it, it actually really opened up a lot of things in terms of making games for me. So I'm going to go ahead and share just the basics with you today. Um, so for this I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a character which will just be a basic cube and I'm going to make a little track, you know, a little spiral and it's going to go around the track. So what are we going to need to do that? We're going to need a blueprint class, for, a blueprint class first of all, excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold here, uh, of type actor, I'm going to name that spline, and in there I'm going to go ahead and add a component of type spline, oop, that's a spline mesh, not quite cracked those yet, but I'll come back with another tutorial when I get around to those guys, um, so there we go, we've got a spline now, that's that, that's all we need to do in here, I'm not sure why this window's so big, but okay, so that's our spline. Um, let's go ahead and drag that onto the world and just take a look at this first of all. So you can see here that we have the root component where this big circle is, is and we also have this other part of the spline which extends off here. Now when we click on that we can move that around and that is independent of the root of the spline. However if I move that off to the left and then grab the root you'll notice that I'm going to move the whole thing. So get your root somewhere that you want to start your spline and then go ahead and start building it with these little nodes. And to go ahead and do that, what you're going to want to do is just sort of stretch them out into a path. And I can hold Alt here and drag off that node to create another point along the spline. I can rotate them to give my track a bit of a bend to it. So as it comes around that corner there, I'm going to drag another node off right to the end. And drag another node off, like so. Just did that one in the uh, rotate section there. And we'll drag one final one down to there. So there we have our spline. Let's imagine that you run this through a valley or somewhere a little bit more interesting than a cube. So what's the other part of this that we're going to need? We're going to need a player pawn. So I'm going to go ahead and create another blueprint class of type pawn. Uh, no, I'm going to do a character. And I'm going to name this uh, player. I hope character's right for this. I just want to uh, really quick check my source material over here. I have uh, another project that I've uh, I've got this running in. It's a pawn, not a character. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Sorry about that. Better than I check and get it right. And um, we'll create a pawn, and that's going to be our player. So pawn, not character. My bad. Inside the player, we're going to need a variable of um, this is going to be a spline reference. So I'm going to name it spline reference, and I'm actually going to go ahead and take that space out and save that. It's not a boolean, it's going to be of type um, spline, you know, the object that we've just created. So I'll make an object reference to that, and I'm going to make this a public variable by clicking this little icon here. This basically means that when I drop them in the world, in fact we should be able to do that already, just add a cube to this guy, so we can see him. There we go, actually, you know what, I think a sphere looks a little bit better. Let's do that. And let's put the sphere on top of the root so that when the root moves along the spline, you know, the sphere sits on top of that. So let's do that there nicely. And OK. So we have a spline in the world. We're going to go ahead and drag out a player into the world, which is this ball here. And you'll notice that we now have uh, an option over here under our details. And it's asking us to add a reference to a spline. And that's going to be a spline that exists in the world. And there it is. There's the spline that we placed earlier. So now our player. They have a reference to the spline, the spline's all laid out, but how are they going to move along it? Well, this is where the magic happens, I guess. So the first thing you're going to want to do is right-click and create a new timeline. Uh, I'm going to name this um, Move Character. And I'm going to double-click on this, and we're going to create a new float track. And this track is going to be called uh, Length Across oops, length across spline. Okay, I'm going to change the length of this timeline here. Now this timeline length is how long it's going to take to go from point zero on your spline to the end. So for, from start to finish, five seconds? Well, let's make it ten. We'll make this one ten seconds, and I'm going to go ahead and add a point here, add a key to this uh, curve track at zero seconds, and the value is also going to be zero. Oops, let me just go ahead and change that again. 
It doesn't like that for some reason. Well, it's close enough to zero anyway. So at the 10 second mark, I'm going to zoom over all the way over here. At the 10 second mark, we'd like a point to be at uh, value 1. So I'm going to add another key here. Change that time to 10 seconds and the value to be 1. So now we have a point at 0 seconds along the track, which has a value of 0, and a point at 10 seconds along the track, which has a value of 1. So this is going to lerp us from the start of our um, spline all the way along to our end. Except it's not a lerp, it's a timeline. Let's jump back into the event graph and take a look at what we can do with this then. So I'm going to need a couple of custom events. So this one is going to be go, and this custom event, let's do, try that again, custom event, this is going to be stop. So I'm going, to hire, uh, I'm going to flick go into play there, and stop into stop. And what I'm going to do with that, well I'm going to need to get the spline reference first of all. So we'll get that. And then we want to get the spline component. Um, hmm. What is this guy called again? Spline component. Uh, we have a spline component already. I want to get that. Those are the parent components. Da -da 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 -da. I've forgotten what it's called now. Um, let me just open up the spline thing real quick. It's just called spline in there. So we have a reference to that. But then I'm trying to get the component of this. That's all it is. Um, okay, one, if I just click on one of these, that should do it. There we go. I can get rid of this now. So I just needed this node, which basically gave me the value of this component instead of spline as the whole uh, object. Probably should have named them something different, but... Here we are. So I want to get the spline length, and I want to multiply that uh, by another float. And I'm going to plug the length across spline in here. Now uh, off this as well, I want to also um, get transform at distance along spline. And the distance is going to be the return value of this. So this is now going to give me a new transform. On my update, I'm going to set actor transform of myself, and I'm going to plug in this transform into here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little timer. So actually, I do want the event begin play. And I want to create a timer. Oops, do we have a functionality? Uh, set a timer by event. And this is going to be every second. Sorry, this isn't necessarily part of moving on the spline. You'll see what this does in a moment. Um, this is simply to start and stop the player as they move along the spline. So I'm going to do flip, flop as my event. And it will come out of there into, you guessed it, a flip flop. Nope, wrong one. Flip, flop as in this guy. And on A, we're going to have go. And on B, we're going to have stop. So this is every second it's going to call go, and then it's going to call stop, and then it's going to call go, and then it's going to call stop. And what we should have is our player move along the spline, stop, move along the spline, stop. You know, it should, it should alternate. So let's take a look and see whether that's the result that we get. So there we go. We have our character moving somewhere. He's, um, he's got that transform a little bit wrong. But it looks like he's... Um, it looks like he's going for it. So we have char the character moving, but something's not quite right about that. I'm just going to go ahead and take a look in the character viewport, make sure that everything is centered over here. We have that in the middle, so I'm not sure why the ball would sit so far off course. Let's go and take another look at that moving of the character, see if we can uh, figure something out. Coordinate space, let's change that to world. Compile that and hit play. And now our ball moves nicely along the spline, stopping and starting every second. But if I just eject out of this, you'll see that we have our spline path there, and our little ball moves his way along the spline, pausing and, and, and starting up again as he goes. So that's how you're going to make a spline and get something to follow it. 
Now, if you look inside the player, you can make a guess as to what you're going to call if you want this thing to go backwards. Um, the only other thing that I'd really like to point out while we're on this, I'm not too sure if I can fit it. Actually, I'll leave that one for another tutorial. I was going to show you how to get it to stop at certain points, but I think that this that we'll wrap this one tutorial up here. So this is basically how you're getting your character to move along um, a single spline. Uh, there's no functionality for checking if we're at a certain point here and all that. We'll do that in another video. But for this one, here's the simple functionality. Uh, get your player moving along a spline. And I actually imagine, I've not tested this, so let's go ahead and test this while we're on video here. I imagine that you could drop these in the air and this thing is not going to be affected by gravity while it's moving along this. So let's go ahead and take a look at it moving along our new spline. And there she goes. She climbs out. So there's no need for no gravity, no AI navigation, nothing. If you wanted to do some kind of, I don't want to use the term AI because it's not. If you wanted to do some ambient uh, vehicles, perhaps moving around a city scene, these splines would be the way to go about doing that. Now, just before I end the video, um, I wanted to give an announcement. Um, I've recently graduated university with a software engineering degree, and I'm looking to start my own business online. Um, and I've been working with Unreal for a number of years now. And so I have launched um, a new service, uh, DevAssist. And DevAssist is essentially a consultation for Unreal Engine for programmers and developers such as yourselves. If you find yourself that you're stuck on a particular problem, um, that you're unable to, to break through that barrier and to continue with your development, then get in touch. You know, We can sit down on Discord, we can have a chat, and for a fair price, we can work through what it is that's slowing you, you and, and your development down, and we can get you back on track. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Uh, if you're interested, check that out. Leave me a message on there. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.